In that book, I had mentioned uh, staying a few days at Puttaparthi, and uh, someone who read this chapter then suggested, why don't you do a full-length Life of Sai Baba? What caused you to stop for a few days in Puttaparthi? Just another... Well, I'd been coming since the 70s. Okay, so you Part were... Partly because my companion on the inner path is a great devotee of Sai Baba, Ranima. Mm -hmm. Sai Baba is something else. He is divinity that you, I've never seen anything like it. And, and it's buoyant. It isn't this, you know, usual religious, you know, grim. I mean, these people from all the nations, they're not concerned about, you know, I'm a Scotsman, I'm better than you, I'm a Brahmin, I'm better than you. No, his Sai Baba is better than us all. He is a prolific writer, a great storyteller, and a Scotsman transplanted to India. Bill Aiken, the author of the important and serious book, Sri Satya Sai Baba, A Life. Welcome to Soul Turns. This interview was recorded in Sai Baba's ashram in January 2004. Very good to be talking with Bill Aiken. You don't pronounce the T in his name. Bill Aiken, who is the author of this wonderful book, Sri Satya Sai Baba, A Life. Bill, you're from Scotland, although you've probably lived maybe as I'm uh, technically a naturalized Indian citizen now. Mm, okay, and you've lived here how many years? I came in 1959. And for most of those years, how would you describe what you've been doing? <laughs> Mucking about. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more constructive than that? No. <laughs> well, then that leads me to my second and final question. <laughs> Whatever led you to write this book, A Life, Sri Satya Sai Baba? Well, you want the whole story? Yes, I want the whole story. Then there goes your, your, your interview. <laughs> <laughs> I was cocking my leg over my motorbike in uh, 1986, and uh, I hadn't put the foot down, so technically the journey hadn't started. I was going to Spiti, a border area, to run in this, this new motorbike. On be in Himachal border with Tibet. I hadn't put my foot down, the phone rang, so I thought I haven't started. It's inauspicious in India if you go back when you've started. So I, I hadn't started. I went to answer the phone, a, a, an editor saying, I liked your articles on steam railways in the Statesman Delhi. Would you do us a book? I said, fine. So then I went off to Spiti, I came back, I, I did the book. The book moved well on railways, backgrounder, and with general travel. It, was this for the uh, travel audience, for, tra for tourists and travelers? Or? No, this is, uh, funnily enough, it was Oxford University Press. Uh, I mean, it sounds very academic. And uh, anyway, after this, the, the, the passability of, of this first book, he said, will you do me another? sort of backgrounder. And I said, fine. And he said, what? I, I said, what about the Deccan? Mm -hmm. Which is what you have here. Yeah. Okay. That's what really turns me on. Uh, you know, I was born at the foot of the Ochil Hills in Scotland. I've always, you know, responded to these terrific archetypal rock formations. And yes. the Deccan is wonderful. Thousands of kilometers of this bouldered terrain. So I wanted to write about the topography, history, religion of the Deccan, which is a little covered area. So I wrote a book called Divining the Deccan. Divining? Divining. Divining the Deccan. And yeah. you did just that, I no did doubt. a motorbike journey from Shirdi to Puttaparthi, about 750 kilometers. Amazing. Stopping off at all the you know, little places people don't usually visit. And uh, in that book, I had mentioned uh, staying a few days at Puttaparthi, and uh, someone who read this chapter then suggested, why don't you do a full-length Life of Sai Baba? Because they liked how I presented him. And before you go on, what caused you to stop for a few days in Puttaparthi? Just another... Well, I'd been coming since the 70s. Okay, so you Partly were... Partly because my companion on the inner path is a great devotee of Sai Baba, Ranima. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, also the Deccan being till recently a comparatively backward area, it had very interesting steam railway re remnants. So you could report on those age. with your book? Well, uh, I came to India to study comparative religion, but I found comparative railways much more <laughs> interesting. That's sort of a metaphor, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and throw in the rocks and you have the whole universe. Yes. Yeah, um, so you said you came here with your companion back in the 70s uh -huh. because she was a follower of Satya Sai Baba. Did yeah. any of that rub off on you? I mean, that's... The well, obviously, I wouldn't have been able to write the book. <laughs> I mean, an awful lot rubbed off. Well, I say that because of your comment to me yesterday that mm. I asked if you were a Baba devotee and you said, no, you're not. Not in that technical sense that, I mean, in India, I mean, it's normal to have a guru and belong to some sect or uh, group and then they more or less uh, insist like the living religions that if you're if you're initiated or born into this cult that's it buddy <laughs> you you stick in fact my my own guru's guru uh, when he he was an english professor way back in 1930 he came to india and his guru said to him, I'm only going to give you initiation if you promise to stick. Otherwise, we do tend to wander. <laughs> well, a friend of mine this morning, in, in characterizing what he feels uh, your relationship might be with mm -hmm. Sai Baba is, he said, no, I don't think he is a devotee of Sai Baba. I think he's a man who loves Sai Baba. Yeah. And he said, furthermore, mm -hmm. I don't think any of us can decide if we're devotees. Devotees mm -hmm. are somebody Sai Baba decides upon. Yeah. Yeah. So, back to the story. You're in Puttaparthi, mm -hmm. and you know a little bit about this village now. You know a lot about the, the rock formations, and, you're, <laughs> and your editor is putting two and two together and saying, how about a book on Sai Baba? No, this wasn't the editor. This was a, this was a devotee, oh. <laughs> if you like. I mean, an old uh, uh, a student who'd been to Sai Baba's college and is a member of the, uh, I mean, what you can call the higher echelons of administration in the, in the ashram. And this person liked this chapter, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that she liked this chapter, because then she said, you can do it. And I said, I'm reluctant to do it, because I feel it should be done by a devotee who, I mean, who has the sort of the passion to go into all the, all the biographical details, you know, search the archives. I, I don't know Telugu, and uh, uh, I'm just too, uh, too much of a slob to want to go into all these sort of <laughs> I, nitty gritties. I doubt that, but perhaps a non-devotee could bring a greater sense of objectivity. Well, this, was, this is what she wanted. She, when she read that first description, which was quite, I mean, sympathetic, but also detached. Uh, she sort of thought this would appeal to the Indian intelligentsia who have a terrible sort of a prescription against Sai Baba. You know, and and why is that? Uh, it's fashionable to be seen against anything popular. <laughs> that simple? No, it's much more complicated than that. Uh, it's partly because India wants to be seen as modern and rejecting all this God-man stuff that we don't have to be spiritual. Let's be, you know, uh, modern technology, sending space probes to the moon and so on. Now, there are several reasons, but a lot of it is uh, the natural outcome of independence, I mean, pride. So did you reluctantly agree to take on this task? Very, or? very reluctantly. And what pushed you over the top, her persuasiveness? No, Ranima. Ranima, and describe her for those people who aren't, because I had the pleasure to interview her. Well, if ago. you've seen a steamroller, <laughs> Well, she hardly resembles a steamroller. <laughs> no, but I mean in, in her sort of... Uh, uh, yes, in her power of persuasion. Yeah, they say that the Punjabi is the Texan of in India. <laughs> <laughs> and she tends <laughs> to win most uh, arguments, not by persuasion, but by just sheer, sheer wearing down. That's, the, a, that's a wonderful the, line. So there was no point in opposing her if she said, do it. <laughs> I try. <laughs> and having worked with her for many, many years. Well, she is also uh, my guru ban. That she shares my former guru. I used to live in an ashram.